Welcome back to the channel. For this video, we're going to set up the relational database service RDS on AWS so we connect our Flask application to a database. We're going to run it locally and then also on AWS to see the database in action. We're also going to download PG Admin, which is a desktop application so we can interact and add records to our database on our local machine. Before we get started, you can help me out a lot by doing a few simple things. Supporting me on either Patreon or GitHub sponsors subscribing to my YouTube channel, liking this video, and sharing on platforms you use like Reddit, Discord, etc. Starting the repo on GitHub, and also following me on GitHub. All these things help me out a lot. I really appreciate it. So let's get started. We're on the management console. I'm going to search for RDS. Click on database instances. Create database. We're going to do Postgres because it's free and open source. We're going to do free tier. The name, we're going to do AWS ECS Demo DB. Username, we're going to leave as a default Postgres. Password, I'm going to use Postgres to make it easier to remember. You should pick something more complicated. We're going to click the same DB instance class type. You can actually select another one. Leave this all the same. Connectivity, we're going to select the same VPC as the EC2 instance we created in the previous videos. We can double check that. Let's duplicate the tab. At the top, we're going to search for EC2. You just select instances on the left. Select your instance. Scroll down. Here's our VPC 08B. Go back. VPC. We're going to select the 08B. Subnet group. Leave this as is. Publicly accessible. We're going to select yes. Why? Because we're going to use PG admin, which I mentioned previously, the desktop application to add records to our database manually. If you don't want to allow public access, you don't have to. It's actually more secure. But for this video's purposes, we're going to select yes. Security group, we're going to use the same one we've been using for the EC2. Additional configuration, port 5432. This is the default port for Postgres, and we're going to leave this as is. Scroll down, password authentication, additional configuration. We're going to create the initial database name. The AWS RDS is not a database per se. It's just a server. It can host multiple databases. So we need to create our initial first database we're going to use. We're going to call this customer underscore transactions. Scroll down. You can enable automated backups. It's highly recommended that you do. And leave all the rest as is. So create database. Okay, it's going to take a little while to create. I'm going to fast forward once it's done creating. Okay, the database is done creating. We need to do one more thing to allow traffic to our database from our local host to be able to use PG admin and also push our database changes from our Flask app to the AWS RDS. To do that, we need to go back to the instance, go security, security groups. Let's go down to inbound rules, edit. We're going to add a rule. We're going to say Postgres, port 5432, same as what we had on the RDS management console. And we're just going to say my IP. Click Save. Great. So now we can actually start looking at the code. Let's go ahead and open up the code in Visual Studio Code, whatever code editor you want to use. The first file we're going to look at is the .env file. It's already set these three variables up top. We're going to set these four down here now for the Postgres database, the user, password, host, and DB. So the user and password, we set these in the RDS management console. I just click Postgres and Postgres for both to make things easy. If you selected something different, you need to put it in here. The host, we can get this easily. Go back, management console, click the database, scroll down. Here's our endpoint. Just copy this and just paste that in right here. Great. And the database, remember we named this in additional configurations. We called it customer transactions. Great. Moving on to the requirements. We have these ones from before. We added a few. SQL Alchemy lets us run SQL Alchemy commands inside of Flask. Migrate allows us to push changes to our database from Flask to RDS. SciCobb G2 allows us to interact with Postgres inside of our Flask application. Boto3 allows us to interact with AWS resources. It's a package created by AWS to interact with AWS resources. And .env to allow us to load the environment variables from our .env file. Moving on to the Docker file, we have these two lines right here. 
We're running app get update and install. We're installing a few Postgres packages necessary to be able to run Postgres inside of our Docker container. Scrolling down, we got a few variables, these here and these here. These are the same ones we defined in our .env file necessary to connect to the Postgres database. Nothing else is different down below. Go to the app.py. We're importing .env, load .env. It's going to allow us to load the .env variables. We're having Flask migrate. Again, allow us to push the changes to our database from our Flask application to the database automatically. SQL Alchemy to be able to run queries on our database. Scrolling down. We load the environment variables right here with load.env. So we're loading all of these variables. And then we're going to access them right here with user, password, host, and database. It's SQL Alchemy database URI. This is the connection string necessary to connect to our AWS RDS database. Track modification is false, just a standard. We initialize our database. We call migrate to migrate the changes if there are any. If it seems like I'm running through this kind of fast, it's because I am. This isn't really the point of the video to show you how databases work in Flask. That's not the point. It's really to show you how to connect a Flask app to an RDS database. So if I'm going a little fast, feel free to pause the video and walk through what I'm saying. But I am going to gloss over a few things. So we have the transaction. This is our table. Simple, just first name, last name, and amount. And we're just initializing all these variables with an ID as a primary key. All simple stuff. We had a new route as well, list DB. We're going to query the transactions table. The transactions is right here. And if there are any transactions, we're going to print them out, separated by a new line. And if there aren't, we're just going to say no transactions yet. Let's move on to the Docker Compose. We added the same four variables, user, password, host, and DB. Same thing down here. Great. So now we can actually try to run our Docker container locally and try to access our application to see if we can call the list DB function. But before we do that, we need to open up the terminal and run flask db init migrate and upgrade. This is going to push the transaction table to our database because right now our database has no tables, so it would fail. So we're going to call flask db init first. Flask db migrate dash m initial commit and then flask db upgrade. Great. So that's done. Now we can set our environment variables. So go back. We're going to go here. So set environment variable in PowerShell. You have to go env. That's how you set environment variable in PowerShell. So I'm going to do the other four. So my four environment variables are set. Now I'm going to run my Docker Compose file. Before you run this, make sure you have Docker Desktop running on your machine. OK, so to run Docker Compose, we're going to do docker compose up dash dash build. OK, it's running. So let's test it in the browser. Go to the browser, go to localhost 5000. There we go. We got our original route. Let's check the list DB route. So list DB. No transactions yet. Perfect. So we know it's working. Now let's actually add a transaction. The way we're going to do that is using the PG admin. I think I've been talking about this whole video. So go to your browser, search for pgadmin.org, go to the download, select your OS. I'm using Windows. Download the latest version, install it. Once you have it installed, you can open it up. It looks something like this. Let's blow it up. Go to servers, register server. AWS ECS demo DB. The connection, we're going to get this from AWS. Go back to RDS. We're going to copy the endpoint again. Paste that in there. Username, I kept this as Postgres. If you change it, you need to change it here. Password. I just use Postgres again. Again, change it if you didn't. I'm going to click Save Password. Save. There we go. Now we're connected. Click into it. We got our databases. Here's our customer and transactions we created. I'm going to go schemas. Here's our tables and transactions. View all rows. Great. So we have nothing in there right now. So let's add one. We'll do one first name. Let's put Alex. Last name, I'll put programmer. An amount, I'll put 1,000. I'll click Save up here. Great. Go back to the browser. Go back to our Flask web app running locally. Refresh. Alex Programmer spent $1,000. There you go. Perfect. Great. So now the last thing we need to do is push this all to AWS so we can run it. So next, we're going to go to GitHub. We're in the repo. 
I'm in private because I have my own private variables here. You're going to be working out the main one that doesn't have private. Go to settings. Go down to secrets. Actions. And we're going to add the four variables for Postgres. So new repository secret. Go back to the .env. We got the user. Paste the value, just Postgres. Add secret. Then we see it here. Now do this for the other three. Once you have the four Postgres variables set, then we can go back to the code and look at the aws.yaml file. This is our workflow file that we used to push to AWS before, except now we're adding the RDS database. The way we're doing that is we scroll down. Before we had this one right here, this block, where we pushed the image to ECR, we commented that out, and we added this one, where we added these four variables for our Postgres environment variables. Here set in secrets, the user, password, host, and database where secrets refers to the GitHub action secrets that we just defined a few seconds ago. So that's the only real change. So now that we covered that, we can go back to GitHub, go to actions, deploy to Amazon ECS, run workflow, run workflow. Give it a quick refresh, click into it. And I'll fast forward to when this is done. Okay, it's done deploying. So now we can actually check this. Go to the browser, AWS ECS demo, programming with Alex.com. Here's our hello world endpoint. Let's check the list DB endpoint. List DB. Great. And we see it. So now everything is deployed. Our Flask application on AWS is interacting with our AWS RDS database. Perfect. That's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to take our Postgres credentials out of our Flask application and out of the GitHub Actions, instead put them onto AWS Secrets Manager so we can access them through there securely. If you have any questions or anything wasn't clear, just leave a comment below and I'll respond as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.